Hey guys, so it's Jane from Lazy Gaming. In this video, I want to talk about some sniper tips for you guys, because I know a lot of you are new to the franchise, or maybe just want some sniper tips. So I'm just going to go through a bunch of them. I'm sorry if I sound a bit echoey. I'm, echoey. I'm kind of in a new setup right now. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe down below. But let's get right into the tips and tricks. So the first thing you're going to want to know about battlefield sniping is the bullet velocity and bullet drop. Now, if you are a veteran of the franchise, don't skip by this part because it is different when compared to previous battlefield fran battlefield games. So I have the stats up on Simthic right here, which is a website for battlefield stats for those of you who don't know. And the bullet drop now is standard among snipers, so it's 12 meters per second squared. Now this is more than the previous game snipers, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. So technically, if you're shooting at the same velocity as Battlefield 4, your sniper is going to have more bullet drop. But really what changes here is the muzzle velocity. So on the majority of snipers, the muzzle velocity is crazy. So on the Gewehr 98, it's 880 meters per second. On the M1903, it's 820 meters per second. I know it's around 440 on the Martini Henry, but that sniper is a bit unique. Which I'll talk about a bit later, but the bullet velocity is very fast in this game. Now, what this means is you won't need to lead your targets as much as you have in previous games, so you basically won't have to aim as far in front of them when you're trying to shoot at them. But for those of you who are new in Battlefield, you don't just aim at someone who's shooting and shoot. You have to actually aim a tiny bit in front of them if they're running, so that by the time the bullet travels to them, it hits them. So I know some of you didn't know that and someone has to comment about it and that's what's unique about Battlefield games. It's one of the only games that actually has a bullet travel. So when you shoot the bullet, if you shoot it right at the enemy and he's 100 meters away and he's running, the bullet will end up being behind him and not actually hit him, which can be frustrating when you're new to the game. Now something they implemented right into the game, which was not here before, something you never had was the sweet spot element. So. Basically what this means is, up close, you won't be doing your maximum damage. Most snipers do around 80 or 70 to 80 damage up close, and then you'll hit a sweet spot. So for the majority of the snipers, this is um, 60 meters and on. So basically between, for example, 60 and 100 meters, you'll be getting a one hit kill or 100 damage. So before 60 meters, you'll do less than 100 and after 100 meters, you'll do less than 100 damage. But the sweet spot is where you will get the one hit kill. Now what I was talking about earlier, what makes the Martini Henry so unique, is that its sweet spot is between 30 and 80 meters, which is first one, the biggest sweet spot, a 50 meter range on the sweet spot is very big. And it's also very close. So basically the sweet spot dictates what kind of sniper you're going to be using. The M1903 has the farthest sweet spot at like between 100 and 140 meters, I believe. But this dictates how you're going to play, though. So the M1903 is a very long range sniper, whereas the Martini Henry is a much more close range sniper. So you can actually go through the weapon stats. Um, just you can go to synthic.com if you want, but you can just basically go into the stats in game and just check whether the sweet spots are closer or further, just sort of gauge the different snipers. Now, when you're not in that sweet spot, headshots are very big in Battlefield. You're gonna be wanting to hit a lot of headshots to get those one hit kills. And something that they added in Battlefield 4 but wasn't in Hardline is the zeroing mechanic. So the snipers are zero to 75 meters to start off. Now what this means is that at 75 meters, if you aim exactly at someone's head, it'll hit it. Now, something that can be very frustrating for new snipers is within about 25 to 30 meters, you can aim for the guy's neck and hit his head. So, this isn't because the game has a large hitbox, it's just because the sniper itself is adjusting for that. So, it's assuming that you're going to be shooting targets around 75 meters. So, if it's closer, it's going to shoot a bit above them. Now, that's a bit interesting and it doesn't come into play with a lot of snipers, but with the Gewehr 98, I find myself aiming a bit below the guy's head, maybe middle of the neck, or even chin to guarantee that I'll hit it. But I mean, it's not that big of a deal, except at longer range. If you want to, if you know the, if you know for a fact the guy is like 150 meters away or 300 meters away, you can change your zeroing so you don't have to adjust for the bullet drop. But honestly, I recommend just learning how to adjust with the bullet drop. If you don't like adjusting, use a weapon like the Gewehr 98. 
I find that you don't even have to adjust for the bullet drop until like 150 meters. So you can just aim at the guy's head, which is very nice with that sniper because it is high muzzle velocity. Now, those of you who maybe came from Call of Duty or other games, switching to your pistol is kind of frowned upon. But in Battlefield, you because especially in this game, you can't really quick scope up close since there isn't a um, sweet spot that starts at zero meters. Switching to your pistol is essential. So even if you get a hit marker on the guy, don't be afraid to switch to your pistol. My personal favorite is the Mars Automatic, but the POA, the M1911 are all very good pistols that you can use. Just don't be afraid to switch to your pistol because it can be a very useful tool in this game that uh, honestly many people don't think about. You'd be surprised how many people don't think about switching to their pistol up close. Now some of the gadgets that can be useful to a sniper are mainly on the flare gun. That's very, very useful. Something that your class gets that no other class gets. If you think there's an enemy around the corner, you can use the flare gun and directly spot him. If you know he's around the corner, aim it at the floor so it'll land next to him because the flare gun, it basically shows you where the enemies are in a radius around it. So if you shoot it up in the air, you can get a long range, but it'll only be constant where it lands. So maybe there's a guy right around the corner, but you shoot it way far away. It'll show that he's right around the corner. But after that initial impact, where he's within the radius, you won't really know where he is afterwards. So I recommend just shooting at the ground. And the sniper shield's very useful if you're doing some long range sniping. I was using it on stream earlier. It's pretty good for um, long range sniping because you can basically get cover from enemies. I was playing on, um, what's the map? The forest map, I think it's Argon Forest, and I was lying down in the middle of that bridge just with the shield, just picking off enemies because none of them could hit me. I mean, it's kind of cheap, but it's a tool that your class has that no other class has, so you might as well use it. Now, my personal favorite sniper is are the, for up close, the Martini Henry. I'd recommend using that, although that's Scout Rank 10, so if you're just new to this, that'll take a while to unlock. I mean, the SMLE Mark III is very good for up close sniping. Um, it's not necessarily a close quarter sniping like we've seen in previous Battlefield games, but compared to the other snipers, it's good for that. Long range sniper would be the Gewehr 98 because of, it has the fastest muzzle velocity, and it's just a very smooth sniper in my opinion. And then for sort of in between and all around versatile sniper would be the Russian 1895. That weapon is pretty good overall, and it really suits all play styles, which is really nice. Do you guys enjoyed this video? Ask me if you have any more questions about this, I'll be sure to respond to them in the comment section. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe for much more Battlefield 1 tips and tricks, but that's what it is for you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.